Hi, you're watching Bike Routes of Brum, a channel dedicated to finding safe cycle routes across Birmingham. In this video we'll be cycling from Sturchley, one of the suburbs in South Birmingham, to Chamberlain Square in the city centre. With part of the Ray Valley route closed off at the moment and the nights drawing in, I thought it would be a good idea to put in a route that's well lit. So in this route we'll be using mostly quiet streets and protected cycle lanes including the full length of the A38 cycle route and it should take about 30 minutes to do. The route takes you up through Selly Park of which there's multiple ways to navigate through to reach the A38 cycle lane. Um, I've picked the one that I've done here as it seems to work well both going into town and coming back to Sturchley. I put a link to the route into the description below so you can download the GPX file for yourself. So we're going to start off where we normally do in Sturchley and join Pershaw Road. Um, as I've said in other videos, this road can be a bit busy, so just be careful of that. Um, traffic never moves too fast and it is meant to be a 20 mile an hour road, so theoretically it should be safe, but you know what drivers are like around this city. Um, but we're going to carry on here and we go up over this tiny little bit for bikes, the world's smallest bike route, and then go left onto Bourneville Lane. And we follow this up and then take a right onto Bond Street. Um, again, Bond Street is it's never too busy to be honest, but just be aware that buses do come up and down this road. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. Now, rather than going straight and up Spari Hill Drive as we have done in the past. We're going to follow the road round onto Riversdale Road. Um, we're just round the back of Morrison's in Sturchley for those who are wondering where we are. Now rather than taking a left onto Umberslade Road, um, we're going to carry on and follow Riversdale Road a little bit further and then take the next left here onto Gristhorpe Road. Now, rather than following Umberslade Road up, which can be quite busy and it seems to be one of the main routes that people use to get into Selly Park, um, we're actually going to take this one here um, because it's kind of a side street. People don't tend to use this one unless they have to. So really, it's any residents you're going to get coming down here, which makes it a lot more pleasant to cycle along. And it's got some little speed bumps on here as well, which kind of slow everybody down. Not the nicest to come down when you're coming the other way, but it does make things a lot easier and much more pleasant to cycle along in the uh, in the mornings. Now, one of the reasons why I've picked this route is that with the Ray Valley route um, being closed at the moment and also with the nights drawing in now, I wanted a way to get into town from Sturchley that doesn't involve going on an unlit path and Selly, Selly Park is basically the way to do that um, because we're going to join up with the A38 blue route in a bit. Uh, the trouble with Selly Park is it's on a massive hill so regardless of whatever way you go, you're going to have to broach a hill at some point. And so I figured that if we take Gristhorpe Road, we're not fighting with cars here. Um, so you can kind of go at your own pace and you're not having to worry. And just like there's a million and one ways to get up to this main road here in Selly Park, um, there's a million and one ways to get back down to the other side and onto the A38 cycle route. And um, we're going to go straight over down here onto Hubert Road and follow it down for a bit. Um, I think this whole area of Selly Oak really could do with being an LTN. Um, I don't think it would have too much of an impact on people. I, I think it would make it a hell of a lot safer to cycle around. There must be loads of students who, who ride to campus. And just putting, I mean, e even making roads one way, you can see here, um, there's a one way road there for cars. You could just put something except for cycles below it and it would make navigating this whole area a lot easier on your bike but as it stands we had to go right and then left onto Tiverton Road uh, just to continue on. I think allowing cycles to go both ways along here would, would just make a hell of a lot of difference but again this road is quite safe to cycle along. Um, it's all 20 mile an hour around here and you've got speed bumps everywhere so I mean you, you can't go too fast on my bike anyway because I've got no suspension so I just get rattled around but it, it's easy to cycle along and I, I never really feel unsafe here but we get to the lights here and we're going to take a right now onto Bristol Road and join the cycle path <clears throat> it's two way here for cycles which is quite nice it's really lovely and wide we're going to take a left now onto Grange Road um, it's one way for cars but they've put something in for cycles to go the other way as well 
um, which is a nice little touch. We go right here and onto this shared pathway up to the Toucan Crossing and cross. If you're looking to go to the university, you go straight ahead. But we're going to take a right and join this cycle path here, which to me kind of marks the beginning of the A38 Blue Route, even though it's not technically, they haven't painted this bit. It feels like they got halfway and then just decided to stop. Now we go past these lights and we hop up onto the actual start of the A38 cycle route. Um, I've previously ridden along a section of this in my video showing how to cycle from the city centre to Edgebaston Cricket Ground. But as we're following it for its entirety, you'll get to see it in all its glory. Um, we have the University Swimming Pool on your left, uh, former home of the Gun Barrels Pub, RIP. Um, but we come across this first section of lights on the route and that puts us into the middle of the carriageway where we'll stay for quite a while. Um, there's quite a few roads like this in Birmingham with you know big verges in the middle and I think that's where trams used to run back in the day. Um, I thought it was a really good idea to put the cycleway here as it's a relatively uncontroversial place to put it which is always good. Um, it's also lovely, just lovely to cycle along this time of year as the trees either side make it look really pretty and autumnal. Um, the route's also really well lit which is a great option for cycle commuting with the dark evenings now upon us. As I've probably mentioned before, the A38 cycle route is one of the main two flagship cycle routes in the city, uh, with the other being the A34 route that takes you up to Perry Bar. Um, the A38 route runs from Selly Oak and University to Hurst Street in the city centre. Um, I think it's a massive shame that they haven't linked up these two routes yet, especially with all the space that you've got on Moore Street, Queensway, which is one of the logical routes to join them up. Um, is it take you past New Street Station, Moore Street Station and the future Curzon Street Station. So it just makes sense to have it there. Um, maybe they will in the future, I don't know. Uh, it's been open since 2019, I think. And it seems to get about 600 odd trips a day, which I think is actually pretty good. Seeing as it only really goes from the city centre to Sully Oak with nowhere else in between. Um, I think if you, as I've said a million times before, build a network, I think it would get used a bit more. But now we've got a set of lights coming up and these are probably something you have to watch out for a little bit they're meant to detect you cycling up to them and then stop the traffic uh, to allow you cycle through without really having to stop sometimes they work sometimes they don't they can be a bit temperamental um so just make yourself aware of it and don't rely on them to go red <laughs> you know just kind of look before you cross the road is what i'd say don't rely on them solely uh, now we cross over and we're back onto the uh, the cycle route there. If you could have gone right there, and that would have taken you to Edge Baston Cricket Ground. But we're going to continue and go along here. Now, one of the small criticisms that I've heard about this route is that this section is a little bit off camber, as you can see. Um, I get that it's meant to help with drainage and probably also allow people to get onto their driveways and stuff but it m does make it more difficult for people who are on trikes or other devices that maybe aren't as stable. Uh, you won't really notice it on a normal bike but it's definitely something to be aware of if you're looking to use the route and you don't have a traditional bike or you know you struggle with balance. Um, you won't really have to interact much with cars along here because it's obviously separated. Uh, but the junction back there with Sir Harry's Road is definitely one where I've seen drivers come flying out of without stopping to look if there are any cyclists coming. Um, the entrance to the block of flats as well back there, but people do tend to slow down for that one. Uh, now, there are plans to extend the A38 cycle lane, lane all the way to Northfield uh, following the A38, which is very much needed. Um, at the moment, the lane just kind of half-heartedly goes through Selly Oak High Street and then just stops past where the old Sainsbury's was. Um, as far as I'm aware, the funding is earmarked for it, but I can't remember when they're actually due to start construction or how long it will take. Um, I think it would be brilliant once it's done as parts of the A38 there can be a bit of a death trap to cycle along. Um, but we cross the road now onto the other side and we go over here. Just be aware of that crossing because people do fly out of that one as well. Um, it's just, yeah, just be careful with it. But we follow it down and we come to this big junction now. Um, I've always moaned about it and thought, oh, God, why are we waiting? It's actually, it syncs up quite nicely with um, these guys coming towards us now. And if you do wait for the lights, you actually get through it quite quickly. It's not too bad. 
Now once we're over the lights we carry on along here for a little while longer as we're nearly at the end of the cycle route. Um, just be aware of pedestrians walking around in the cycle lane here as it is one of the main walking routes into the city and it can be quite busy at times. Um, you've also got quite a few bus stops along here as well so just bear that in mind as well. Um, this coming up is also a point where you might start to see a bit of broken glass in the cycle lane as well so just be aware of that to avoid any punctures because I've had one or two around here in the past. Um, also be careful here, uh, this bit where we come onto Renton Street I'd whack your hand out to indicate that you're going to turn left here because often cars don't stop even though they are meant to give way. Um, this is where the Kent Street cycle lane should be but it's been taken over by the construction site for a while. Um, hopefully they are meant to give it back. Don't know when that's going to be. Um, I don't know why it's still blocked off, to be honest. There's no real reason for it to be now. Um, but there you go. I, I can moan about it all day. But we go left onto Hurst Street and follow it up here. It's one way for cars, but as you can see, there's another cycle lane there for uh, people going back down. Now you can go to the left just there, but I think it's just easier to go straight straight through, especially if there's no cars coming this way. Um, but it is two way for cycles along here. We hop up and we're into just outside the Hippodrome and we carry on back onto the, um, the little cycle lane here. And we come up to Smallbrook Queensway um, where we do have our own set of lights, which we'll get to go over now. And we continue over Smallbrook Queensway and onto Hill Street, which if you've watched any of my videos, you'll be very, very familiar with now because <laughs> it seems to be pretty much where I always end up. Um, yeah, we carry on up here around the back of New Street Station and annoyingly there are quite a few lights for us uh, and for vehicles as well. Um, so just make sure you stop at them like you meant to. Um, yeah, we carry on. If you look just to your right there, that's where the uh, West Midlands Cycle Store is. If you want a good place to store your bike, uh, you can apply for it online and they'll just give you a Swift card, which will give you access. Um, it's, it's actually a really good place to leave your bike if you're going anywhere at New Street or you're going away for a bit because it is properly locked. Um, we carry on up this bit of Hill Street. This is the steepest part and not very nice really to go along. But you can see our destination of Chamberlain Square in the distance. Um, it's Christmas market time now. So this is going to be rammed for the most part by the time this video actually comes out. Um, and a lot of this will be filled with stalls and a bit of a bottleneck. So just bear that in mind as well. But we go up through Victoria Square and then end up in Chamberlain Square where we finish. Thanks again for watching the video. I hope that you found it useful. If you have any other ideas for alternate routes or you want to mention anything that I've forgotten, please feel free to comment below. I try to upload these videos as much as I can, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any routes. Thanks again for watching.